MSB here, and the time has finally arrived! Primal Dawn has now released, and it is something that so many of us have been waiting for. So, today, in honor of the special event, I'm going to be cracking open 20 Primal Dawn booster packs. Now, as per my previous videos, cracking packs isn't the most efficient way to actually use packs. What you should be using them for is either drafts, or sealed gauntlet tournaments, or the new evolving sealed gauntlet tournament, which I'll discuss more as an exciting new player tournament style, which is fantastic. Uh, very amazing. That'll come in another video. So, enough talk. Let's get started. Okay, number one. Here we go. Oh my gosh, set four. Can you believe it? We're at set four already. Okay, Cloudwalk. I'm just having a little, quick look at some of these. Macro Mitts, Hatchery Tormentor. Great. Okay, and what is my rare? The Moonsong Oracle. Very nice. Lots of new Kyotal um, that are in here. Lots more. Um, oh my gosh, that's right. This is that one that uh, each card transforms into an Oracle Song. That could be crazy card advantage in a Mono Sapphire, uh, mono sapphire deck. Go ahead and stash these. Uh, another video will probably go into uh, chests, chest rolling, chest opening. So we'll just stick to the packs. 20 packs today. Let's go number two. Here we go. Another rare. What do we got? Pale Harvester, Duckwing, Duskwing Shepherd. Duckwing, Duckwing Duck. Uh, Shard Prism. This is really neat. I really like this one. And the art's nice. Um, I don't think that would actually make it into uh, one of my, uh, my revised dream deck, but very interesting. What else do we got here? Canyon Runner, Junk Welder. Some good stuff. I love these. Oh, the Life Weaver Shaman. This is really sweet. Gain that much plus one. I like that. that that'll that definitely be going in some kind of deck. Wellspring. All right. Gain, oh, this is that uh, XX. Gain zero X and then a ton of thresholds. That could be neat in like a... The um, Moon Cap. Mushroom Cap, Spore Cap. What's that one? There's a, a set one troop that... Gains XX depending on the number of wild threshold you have. That'd be neat. Okay, number three. Let's see here. Hereafter, Righteous Air, Sepulchre, Flesh Weaver, another one of these crazy five shard troops. I can't wait to make a five shard deck. That'll be fun. Shield Bash is neat. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm spending. Oh, Maw of the Hunt. This is crazy. When an elf you control deals damage to a champion, if this is in your hand, you can play it for free? That's ridiculous. And then I can't wait to see what the equipment for that is. It's a lot of great stuff. Ooh, Gallows Ghasts! This is pretty sweet. I like this one. It's not, I mean, it's not going to run the races in PvP, but you can just see so many of these cards for PvE and the options that you have with them. That's just really neat. Gallows Ghasts. And the art's sweet, too. Stash that. let got to pick up the pace here. We're going way too slow for a... 20 booster pack pulls. Let's see here. Number four. Another rare. One of my uncommons. Midnight Spiritualist. Flickering Gobbler. Uh, this looks like a deck, a uh, Ruby Sapphire deck, that, that seems just like a really, really neat build around. Um, it's mostly about playing actions and fleeing these gobblers at people. That's crazy cool. I'm definitely going to be making that. And then Reap is a fantastic, um, fantastic removal. That's um, really going to be good for especially like a five color deck, a five uh, shard deck. Very neat. Okay, let's see. Brood count. Oh my gosh. This guy is disgusting. When I said that, you know, certain things won't make waves, like this card is going to be fantastic for Venom decks. 10-5 five for five and he's got crush. And when uh, he deals damage, instead of dealing damage, you put that many spider eggs, spiderling eggs, that's ridiculous. And again, you know, the art on these cards is so good. Okay, hopefully we get a legendary in these. Let's see. What are my ghost howler? There's some more of that um, coyote cattle business. Midnight fever, silver rook, nightmares. Okay, let's take a look. What is this? Oh, nice! The new rare lands okay if there's one piece of advice that i can give you it's that generally speaking anytime there are rare or eventually i'm sure eventually there'll be legendary lands always try to get a play set because those are so good 
Um, they're so versatile. They're gonna. You never know what kind of cards gonna be released in the future. So getting these lands is so important. So that way you have a set and you can just run with the deck building. If there's a new, awesome version of a like an orc deck that you use this and it's just amazing, because that's fantastic. Get rage one. That's ridiculously cool. Nice. Okay. Here we go. Common chest. I don't mind the common chests because common chests are what you need in order to. You want to roll common chests in order to get um, all of the rewards. Let's see. Cry of Gawain. Power. This is uh, another ruby trick. That's Thurgy. Midnight Spiritualist. That's neat. Create a phantom for each different threshold you have. Whoa, that's that would be pretty neat for a, uh, a five-shard deck, too. A lot of crazy necrotic stuff coming out. Nice. Let's check it. Hulking Smasher! Oh, it kind of looks like the Hulk. When this is dealt damage, it gets Rage 1 for each damage dealt to it. This would be interesting with something like uh, self-damaging effects or, or self-pinging, uh, like a Heat Wave or something. You know, you, you play that and then throw a Heat Wave and, you know, you're getting damage on it as well, just for free. I don't think it's, you know, extremely well-costed, but that's okay. Not everything has to. This guy is cool. Cottontail Explorer. Uh, when he enters play, reveal the bottom three cards of your deck, and then all revealed resources go into your hand, and the remaining go into your crypt. That has some very interesting um, crypt re regeneration uh, decks that it could go into. Uh, not as good as something that, you know, wouldn't put resources in. It, it's sort of a confusing one, and the equipment I don't think helps that much, but um, I could definitely see this as being a good card in uh, certain, like, reanimation decks. That'd be pretty cool. Anything else that's springing out? No. Oh, I think that was a rare chest. Nice. Rare chest. Excellent. As good as uh, common chests are, it's always nice to get a rare or legendary chest. What do we got here? Cleanse. Revert all cards. This is... <laughs> anytime you have one of those ridiculous encounters uh, where it's all about, like, um, the hag. Uh, the, uh, the sea hag. Like, this would be perfect. You're just like, boom, revert all cards. And then you don't have to worry about it. That's pretty nice. Another Reap. Reap's fantastic. Dark Fur Tail Cutter. That's, there's a lot of, um, there's a couple of hate cards now. Uh, because this is a Shin Hair that um, damages Kyodal. And then there's also, I think, like a, an Orc one that damages Venom. So a couple hate ones out there. Uh, Redlock's Apprentice. That's pretty cool. What else we got here? Hextricator. Gain a threshold of your choice. Always neat. Okay, let's see what the rare is. Song of the Sun. Replenish your resource points. I'd love to see what the equipment is on that. The, the art is certainly neat. I like that. Um, I like that. Okay. Here we go. Almost halfway through. Let's see. Hopefully we get a legendary out of this. Priest. Desilthurgy. Okay, Monk of the Six Strikes. Another card you control is in your hand. The card is a troop. <clears throat> it gets, otherwise this gets, that's neat. So you sort of play that as your last one. Uh, not super strong, unless of course you see the equipment. That's why I love PvE so much. You get to see uh, lots of cards which are, you know, eh, that's okay. It turn into something that's like, whoa, that's amazing. Okay, let's take a look here. Transmogrifade. Revert a transform target troop into a random artifact, constant, or troop with cost minus one. <laughs> that's neat. One cost. That is... That's actually a really interesting card because it is quick and it's um, pseudo-removal because it's a random artifact, constant, or troop with cost minus one. So you could play that on something that's extremely troubling, like a, a puck or... Um, Let's just start with Puck, because let's say you're going second, let's say you're on the draw, and your opponent puts out turn two Puck, and you need to get rid of it super fast. Um, if you're Sapphire, then that's immediate, bam, hit it with Transmogrifade, and then you don't have to worry about whatever comes after it. So I think that'll be actually a really good um, inclusion, at least in sideboard, for uh, some PvP decks, competitive PvP decks. Let's see here. Number eight. Number eight. Hopefully looking for a legendary Midnight Spiritualist again. Fungus Among Us. <laughs> At the very least, the name is absolutely worth it. 
Four target troops in a crypt into your deck. Create a shroom pin for each troop. Let's take a look at what shroom pin is. Ah, what one, okay. Any other interesting is the Bumblebots. Uh, there's a champion that uses Bumblebots, um, which is really interesting seeing that being uh, put in there. Uh, Maps Bot. This is kind of like a, a super low cost version of the uh, Adaptatron, which is kind of neat. I like it. Okay, let's see what our rare is. Cosmic Shaman, major and minor. When this enters play the next troop in your deck, it's all the socketed powers, and when it dies, it's the socketed powers. Uh, high cost, uh, but obviously, you know, you look at things like the um, Azure Cannon, things like that, you, I'm sure there could be a use in here. And again, you know, even if it's not in PvP playable, you'd really want to see what the equipment is for PvE because that could definitely be usable. Okay, halfway mark. Here we go. Let's see. I think legendaries are uh, approximately one out of 10. Another shard prism, that's neat. A recoiler, when the center's play, put another card you control into your hand. That could set up some neat combos. Another reap, always good. Definitely need four of those. And a cleanse, like that. Cloud speaker, scavenger, anything else that's interesting. Star touched watcher, I love this. <laughs> Star Touched Watcher is a 0 4 with Empower, so you can double it, double the cost, and then it'll be an 8 defense. It's crazy. <laughs> I'd be really neat with that one shift power that. Um... Ooh, Mecha Hive. Uh, let me finish off my thought. That, that one shift power that you gain on attack, the, uh, the troops' defense, uh, you get a bonus to the attack for it. Okay, Mecha Hive. Create a Bumblebot and put it into play. This gets minus one, minus one. When you gain a charge, this gets plus one, plus one. That's interesting. I could definitely see some kind of like crazy dwarf robot ramp into this and then just start squeezing out Bumblebots. That's neat. I like it. And an uncommon chest. Here we go. Number 11. Okay. Let's see here. Prairie Trapper, uh, Void target attacking troop with attack equal or less than the number of Kyle you control. That's definitely a Kyle theme card. Press the digitator. You gotta love the press the digitation. Create a random action with cost one that you need thresholds required to play and put it in your hand. Hey, creating free cards is never a bad thing. That's pretty slick. Anything else? Righteous Air. Festering Decay, got another Cottontail Explorer. Oh, Refute. This one is neat. Empower, interrupt target card with three cost or less. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's check this out. Rotten Ranker, I love the art on this. Put target troop from your crypt into play. That troop battles target opposing troop. That's neat. Um... So yeah, you can see the uh, usefulness that, that something like Cottontail Explorer can help you cheat something into play. You know, you use like um, Wild Ramp, kick something into your crypt, and then Rotten Ranker it, because then you get it to come out, as well as to battle something. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's going to be, again, top in the charts as far as constructed PvP, but interesting nonetheless. An interesting mechanic. Okay, here we go. Come on. Let's go Legendary! Are we gonna get any of them this time? I don't know. I don't know. Mesa Totemist. Okay, this card is amazing. And this card is absolutely going into my Mono Diamond Cleric deck. Empower it. You can. Or when you gain health, this gets plus three attack and Swift Strike this turn. And the equipment is whenever you gain health, other clerics gain attack. So that's insane. That is insane for that Mono Diamond Cleric deck, and I'll absolutely be including that in the second part of the video. That's amazing. And then and then you can also empower it. So you can double all this. So it could be a 2-8 for 6 that gets plus 6 and Swift Strike this turn. I'm pretty sure. Doubling all the starting numbers in the... Yeah. So it, it, it doubles. Empowering doubles everything. All numbers that are on the card is doubled. That's insane. This is a really good card, and I want more of these. Give me more, please. Okay, let's see what the rare is. I don't even care what the rare is. I'm like, I just love this Mesototomus. Shrine of Zlurgosh. 
At the start of your turn, sacrifice a card and draw a card. That is fascinating. Sacrifice a card and draw a card. Hmm. I'm sure someone somewhere is going to come up with something nuts with that. Some great way to abuse it. Chilltail Guide. What great art. Look at that art. Man, I want to I wanna, um, extend it art that. But just beautiful. I mean, overcosted, but but beautiful. Very nice. Okay, and that's an uncommon chest. Here we go. We're getting towards the end. Come on, legendary. Yes! Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. What's going to be? Let me just, before I go into it, whew, before I go into it, let's just go ahead and check out Ashward Cinder Stump. When you play an action, plus two, plus two. This is like Scarred on Crack. This gets plus two. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Okay, look at this graphic. It's crazy awesome. Okay, here we go. Come on, be a good one. Chrono Demon. Daemon? Chrono Daemon? Chrono Demon. When this enters play, you may void all other non-Avatar cards. When this leaves play, put each voided, each card voided by this into play. Okay, it's expensive. Eight cost is prohibitive. Absolutely. And uh, double double thresholds not fantastic. The one advantage that this has are two. First, it's got flight, which is great because it's not just a vanilla beater. Second, it does something when it enters play, which is so important. If you're going to play something at eight resources, it better do something when it enters play. And voiding all other non-artifact, uh, non-avatar cards, that's about as big of an impact as you can possibly have. So this could absolutely save your life in like a, a raid encounter, something that's a super long, protracted uh, fight where you're doing diamond, uh, which is, you know, lots of defense, lots of control, and then you play this as your win condition, you pop this out, all avatar is gone, and then you can start swinging in, and even if he throws down some vanilla blockers, you're flying over him. So, that's super sweet. Um, I, again, don't think it's going to make ripple, huge ripples in the um, PvP constructed community, but, you know, unless the, the format gets super slow, but that's still awesome that I, I love this I love this art and I love this card that's nice excellent okay so now let's see if we can uh, match the odds and get in the next seven one more legendary or hey two maybe let's see oh my gosh back-to-back -back legendaries <sighs> so pumped yes okay uh, another recoiler chompasaur <laughs> Yeah, dinosaurs are huge in Hex. Dinosaurs and uh, squirrels. There's going to be an encounter. That's dinosaurs versus squirrels at one point. You may destroy target artifact or constant. Gain health. That's, again, this is a really neat um, sideboard card. Okay. Whew, let's check it out. Oh my gosh, yes! Yes, William Rowan. Okay. Look, he's a vanilla 3-2 two for 2. Okay, double... Double diamond. So really you're looking at this for mono diamond weenie decks. Okay. So he'll die very quickly once you hit two resources or three resources unless you have something to pump him up. However, when he enters play, you create Rowan, which is this huge friggin' great wolf with steadfast and swift strike. And then William Rowan has Swift Strike, and this deals double damage. So then he's effectively doing six Swift Strike damage when he attacks. And every time you attack with him, Rowan moves up in your deck. This is a fantastic, fantastic example of a card that you just can't do in physical TCGs. This requires digital only, because you place Rowan, you place this wolf randomly into your deck, and then every time Rowan, William Rowan attacks, it moves up in your deck, but you just don't know when it's going to hit. That's awesome. That's This is an awesome legendary card. I will absolutely put this into a deck. I know, again, probably won't run waves in PvP Constructed unless something happens um, that really speeds up the, um, the format. Because, you know, you could just block him. Uh, he would end up sitting on the wayside until Rowan surfaces, and then he'd be amazing, which you might do. I don't know, but uh, I'm just glad I got a copy of this, because that's fantastic. Oh my gosh, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so now we're good. We're on average for the number of legendaries we should get in 20 packs. 
Now, if I get another one, I'm going to be very pleased, but it'll be okay if I don't. Combat training. One attack when this deals combat damage to an opposing champion. Put all combat trainings in your crypt. Okay. Put all combat training. So, oh, that's neat. So you keep looping it back. You play it, and then if he gets through, then you grab all of your combat trainings back. So even if one misses, like if, it, if, if one time it gets blocked, then the second time you play it, and then you get two of them back. That's actually really good fuel for, um, like, Mono Ruby. That would be good in that Mono Ruby deck that I have for farming. Uh, next action gets troops in your deck. Okay, more prophecy stuff. That's all right. Concuss. This is fantastic art. <laughs> Spashing them across the face. <laughs> the champion discards one card. That's really neat. Especially the, the Empower is, is a cute, uh, cute little addition to that. Okay, let's see. Vision Quest. Put three cards from your hand. Oh, that's right. This is that constant. This is interesting. Obviously, three cost triple Sapphire is, again, limiting it to mono Sapphire decks. But what you get is very interesting because you put three cards from your hand into your deck. And then at the start of your turn, assuming, of course, that it doesn't get destroyed in the meantime, then you draw a card. So this is really good cycling for any mono sapphire deck that's looking either for combo pieces or control. You get to ditch everything that you don't need and then you just suck it back up in your hand with new cards to help you out. This is, I think this is solid. Um, I don't know if this, again, will hit PvP, but this will absolutely be in mono sapphire in PvE. I could absolutely see using this. And there may be mono sapphire control that uses this in pvp constructed tournaments i could see it there's enough there's enough good mono sapphire uh, mono sapphire has been run before so that's just a solid card okay Whew, got some good ones so far that's nice okay another chill tale scion of volosolov and, oh, this is the other hate card, the Quash Ridge Exterminator. So, as you can tell, it does one damage to each opposing spider and venom troop when this comes into play. And then you void all eggs from the top ten cards of your deck. That's a really good hate card, because obviously spiderlings are two ones. So, okay, let's see what we get. Nice! Primal Essence. So, this is an, another of those rare lands where every time you play one the other Primal Essences get buffed. So your first one is a 1-1, one, one, your second one's a 2-2, two, two, your third one's a 3-3. Three, three. So uh, really good if you're just going to make like artifact-only decks, because then this gives you a neat ramp into something like Eternal Guardians. I like it. That's pretty sweet. <clears throat> I always love the rare lands. The rare lands are never like the most exciting. Um, like you're never, oh my gosh, that's it, it's the best. Like you never... You're, you're trained not to feel fantastic about it necessarily, but the usefulness of them is absolutely amazing. You want playsets of them, uh, because that's always something you can dip into moving forward. Another Life Weaver Shaman, uh, Death Mask. I hope I get another one of those Mesa Coyotes. Okay, let's see. Elder of Visions. 2-2 two, two for 2, so that's always nice. Prophecy, when this or another Coyote enters play, the next troop in your deck gets plus 1, plus 1. Okay, well that's pretty simple. Uh, when this or another Kyotal enters play. So obviously neat little build around card for a Kyotal deck uh, because you can get tons of prophecy uh, kicking off uh, straight from turn two with this guy. That's neat, I like it. Legit, legit building strategy for you Kyotal lovers. Another uncommon chest, okay. Three packs to go. We'll see if we break the averages and get another legend. Oh yes, fantastic. Great, another flickering gobbler. <laughs> another flickering gobbler. Lyrical chanter. That's, yeah, two, two, one. one create one random chant and put it in your hand. I guess you'd have to do... Because there's a chant for each shard, so I guess you'd have to run five shards for this? I suppose? Okay, let's let's see. A bloombringer. Steadfast. Basic for triple. While it's in your hand, put six troops from your crypt into your deck... Play this for free. Other plants you control at plus two, plus two, and steadfast. Wow! Wow, that's sweet. Six for six. Six is awesome. 
obviously this is crazy in a plant deck. Oh my gosh, there's so many good plants that you could just throw in with this and it'd be amazing. Steadfast, and again, you can cheat it out. Put six troops from your crypt into your deck, so you don't get, have to get six six. So uh, that's another one of those, uh, the Cottontail Explorers or um, Cartographers, whatever it was, the one that puts three cards into your graveyard. You could theoretically use that to start chucking troops in your graveyard and then put those back into your deck and then play this from your hand without having to spend any resources. So that's really neat. And I love that art, man. That's so slick. Yes, we beat the average, guys! Fantastic! And a rare chest. Hey, always gotta love that. So, two to go. Let's see what the last two are. Hopefully I get another one of those uh, uncommon coyote clerics. Uh, Pious Paladin. Life Drain and Swift Strike for two. Okay, this is solid. This is a solid troop. Two cost, double diamond threshold, two, one, life drain, swift strike? Ooh, and he's a click! Oh my gosh, and he's a clerk! Okay, my mono diamond deck is just gonna need like a ton of reworking after these new cards. Oh, I can't wait. Fantastic. Let's get in there. Another brood count! Oh my gosh. Awesome. Awesome. Obviously, you're gonna have to bust out a, uh, a venom deck. Uh, for uh, for the PvE campaign. That's amazing. I love it. Great. And another common. Okay. Whew. Last card. Last pack. Here we go. What a wild ride. Oh my gosh. Got some great ones. I got some great ones out of this. And ripping packs is always so much fun. Uh, oh well. No um, evolution. That's kind of neat. Um, obviously no uh, Mesa, I'll have to get those later. Oh my gosh, what a wild ride. Again, ripping packs, obviously if you don't like PvP, as I mentioned in my past video, you're not an idiot. If you hate PvP and you just don't want to play against other players and you just want to rip open packs and, um, and uh, see what you get. You know, I'm not gonna, it's just that there's more efficient ways to use your pack through tournaments if you want to compete. Uh, so, at least this gives you an idea. So here we go. Another Cosmic Shaman. Okay. That's cool. Uh, and Oh, hey, and it is a Cleric. Hmm. That's interesting. Because, that, again, that could actually have some good uses for something like a Mono Diamond. Um, or not even Mono Diamond. Uh, for a campaign deck. Something that, that deals with lots of life drain. So that way you can sit around until turn 6. Because, you know, 5-5 uh, five, five or 6 is still pretty neat. And, you know, the fact that Prophecy is something on play and on death, that's that's pretty interesting. Okay. Soothsaying, I like this one. I'm going to take a look at the equipment for this, if there is any. Draw two cards and choose to discard a card. I like that. That's That's got potential. It's got potential. Okay. So, there you have it. That is 20 packs for the new set four, giving you some ideas about what's out there. Obviously, some very exciting cards, which I am lucky enough to have pulled, and uh, pretty decent... Uh, legendaries as well. So thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.